All right, that was a quick break, but hopefully it was a, a little of what was needed. Um, hey, I wanna thank everyone who's been on the, the event all day. We've had six, we're about to have our sixth speaker and we started at 10 o'clock this morning and I see a lot of names that have been on all day and it's just wonderful. You guys are troopers <laughs> and um, super glad that, uh, that we could all be on all these talks together. Just to recap, we had um, Nancy Hoffman, want to be an activist, build your career in a nonprofit. Uh, Tom Smith and Lenita Reason, they were from uh, Justice at Work in the Bra Brazilian Worker Center in Boston. Uh, talking about immigrant rights and dignity for all on the job. We had the Reverend Will Mebbin on Stop Romanticizing Martin Luther King Jr.'s Dream. We had Richard Walker. He was the former VP of the Federal Reserve Bank in Boston, talking about the working cities challenge and uh, uh, poverty in the cities and how to overcome that. Um, we just had Josh Dodge from UMass Amherst with uh, issues of race, diversity, and oppression. Um, and we are getting ready to welcome our last guest for our one day university on social justice, uh, Julie Vanderhoop, talking about indigenous culture and Wampanoag priorities. Um, so I just wanna make sure that I am recording this. It looks like it is recording. Um, so Julie is with us today. We recorded our um, interview earlier. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play that recording, but she is with us so that as soon as it's over, we can uh, continue her discussion and do a Q&A with everyone after. Okay, we're recording. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Holly Bellabono with ASMV, Adult and Continuing Education on Martha's Vineyard. I'm very happy to be joined right now with Julie Vanderhoop and uh, excited to talk with her about issues relating to the Wampanoag tribe and to the town of Aquinnah and to Martha's Vineyard residents and people everywhere regarding social and racial justice issues. So thank you for being with us, Julie. And it's really good to be here. Um, happy to start this conversation and I look forward to being able to uh, jump in and, and discuss and hear and learn uh, as we move forward through the day. So thank you, Holly. Thank you. Do you wanna, um, if you would, please just give us a, um, a history of yourself and what you do and who you are and where you're from. Sure. Um, well, I am a lifelong member of uh, this community in Aquina, uh, a, a tr tribal member of the Wampanoag tribe um, here uh, in Aquina. I moved back about close to 18 years ago now. And I came home after several years of being on the road, uh, working, um, schooling, and, uh, and just traveling uh, all around. But uh, I brought my family back here to our traditional homeland to connect, uh, which is uh, really important. Uh, as a tribal member and as a person uh, that was seeing a lot of change in the community. Uh, and, I, and I just wanted my family to understand uh, a lot about our connection here um, as uh, it's really important for who we are. And, uh, you know, and now we're here <laughs> in COVID and dealing with our, uh, social justice this, these days. And um, you know, as a, uh, one of my jobs is a selectman or a select woman from the town of Aquina. And just trying to connect with the community on this is really an important po point um, for my generation and those above and below me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a new tribal elder. <laughs> which is hard to say, but yes, um, which is a great thing uh, in many ways. But uh, the words that I carry and uh, say are heard uh, in, and respected uh, by many people. And, and as I moved back, I really took a, the role, the responsibility for being um, one of the few 
uh, members of our community that was a lifelong uh, born here, raised here person, uh, seriously, and wanted to be able to uh, get into the politics of, uh, of, of the land of this place, of this community, and be able to, uh, to uh, share the history that I know and uh, also uh, in my everyday work incorporate uh, these special things. So um, social justice talks are, are very important uh, right now. And one thing that I like to remind people is that these changes um, as my people this year have celebrated our, our 400 years of colonization. These talks, these actions are, are not going to change things overnight. And certainly we are here for the long run to discuss and to move forward uh, as these are important things uh, to balance things uh, for those people who have been uh, injured and uh, these are, once again, I'm just very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, what would you maybe say to um, uh, someone on Martha's Vineyard, uh, just the random person who, who is trying to learn more about Wampanoag um, issues right now, mm -hmm. and where to, that person was to ask you, you know, what are your priorities for, um, uh, for the community right now? What would you say to them? Right, uh, our, you know, it's so important uh, that any person uh, reaching out to uh, their, well, reaches out to their community. This is where it starts. It starts with the smaller pieces and uh, looking into uh, what, what organizations, what nonprofits are, are doing, uh, what their community is doing, how do they have uh, diversity programs, uh, are they uh, running or are there organizations that we can join to learn about um, histories together, the talk, the changes that we would like to see and how do we bring about these changes? Uh, you know, moving from old thoughts to new thoughts is important so that we understand how, how to relearn our vision as we move forward in each day. Um, one thing that was uh, really uh, it's, it's, it's hard to re-envision things when you're just going about your daily work because a lot of the time we don't see ourselves as being or creating a problem. Uh, but unless we uh, look into how we're doing things or join other people, how would we know? Uh, so really to make ourselves step out of our daily tracts that we're on and go and share um, something else culturally or, you know, artistically or, uh, you know, someone giving a talk, just stepping out of what we normally do to expand our, uh, our horizons a little bit and to understand uh, someone else's journey that they're on uh, is really important. And uh, these are the practices that we're going to have to do to make great change. Uh, and in convening with other people that are looking into, um, you know, just diversity on every level from education to the, the smaller governments uh, is really important. I mean, we could be walking on a land bank trail here on Martha's Vineyard, and I recently did that. Uh, I think I was in Christiantown and Native people had a settlement in Christiantown. It was uh, a different uh, 
a different settlement than was in Aquina. And for those of us who don't know, Christian Town is about 15 miles uh, down the road uh, to the north, north, uh, northwest, I guess. And uh, actually, uh, and so those natives had spoken a, a slightly different accent on our language even. Uh, and they would congregate there. And um, as colonization happened, they had a little uh, a chapel uh, for meeting and worshiping. And uh, the mission would bring people together. And that was always, um, you know, what native people were brought into. And uh, as I walked through the woods, there were signs uh, that told of uh, the language and what we were seeing. And that was really, really nice to see. Um, and they were, uh, they weren't anything that was, there was just signs that were pinned up to the trees. They weren't there, you know, they weren't going to last longer than 30 days because it was just something that someone had copied off on a copy machine, put up on just to, to know that, um, you know, native people had walked there, had worked there, had lived there was important and actually made you understand, well, you know, what was special about it and thinking about the past and history was really nice to see. Um, but uh, there's, there's also many sides of that community that was there. Why aren't they there now? or, you know, and, and what happened. And, and I didn't see um, signs for that. So these are things that we need to work on. Um, the history of that chapel, which is, um, it, it needs to be preserved and it's worthy of uh, preservation. Uh, the chapel is falling down on the inside not necessarily on the outside, but it needs to be restored. Um, and then, you know, practice the stories of, of who was there and what happened, what, what happened, because there was a, there was a longer story there. Uh, and the story was that, that as uh, settlements came in uh, from the colonies, other colonies, and as native people, they, you know, traded knowledge for blankets or whatever, um, those people were decimated by smallpox or some other virus. And, you know, once again, some of those people moved again to the West, the Western part of the island to escape that, uh, you know, the encroachment which I mean, we're, we're seeing here on Martha's Vineyard, they're escaping New York and they're coming to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so these are things that people do. They're migrating to safer places. Um, the native people were looked at as weak at that time because we were vulnerable to these disease, this disease. So uh, we escaped harm of slavery or, you know, because uh, there was a weakness when we were near the, the new colonies. So that, you know, these are really important things to think about. And it might not be, uh, it, it is my history, it's not someone else's, but by recognizing um, that these settlements were there and how do we, recreate these stories because the people are still here. Um, uh, is it, how important is it? And that we are, we're walking and sharing these lands which are, are sacred, but there's so much more, so, yeah. You said something a little while ago <clears throat> um, that we're celebrating 400 years of colonization. Mm -hmm. And that struck me as an odd choice of word celebrating because it's the it celebration with... to come together and to start to talk about it mm -hmm. i recently 
got together with a bunch of scholars, natives from all across the nation to discuss this. I mean, a celebration was us coming together to talk. Okay. And, you know, I, you know, it was, it was motivating. It was invigorating to hear these conversations that of the wounds and also of the knowledge that has been held and not heard. Uh, we need to uh, work on these voices to coming out. Uh, there, there have been such offenses and I like to see, uh, what do I say? Myself, I, I take those offenses and I want to be able to, to work to not be seen as, as, uh, I don't know the, the necessarily the word for it, but to move forward and use it with my words to make the reparations so that these aren't happening to my children. And I've definitely brought my children back and they have come and walked the same, they've gone to the same schools, They've, but if I was ever offended, which I very much was um, in our communities um, on this island as a young person, then you know to cha make changes so that my children didn't have to uh, see that. But they, but in in their own way, they did, and we all need to think about this as we're with other people. And, and how, you know, and it, I remember, you know, maybe it was always looked at that children were vicious and things that they said. They also say the things that they're hearing from their environment. And it, it makes that impression. Like, okay, if, I, if you were uh, going through a neighborhood and, and locked your door and it was, because it was a neighborhood that you're not used to, or that you know there are lots of crowds, or I don't know, maybe it's a minority neighborhood, and your children see you lock the doors. You know, normally when we're driving a car, we're not locking our doors, but that little hint of whatever would make an impression, and these things are the visuals that are not talked about in our society that are part of the problems that we're seeing um, that make uh, divisions between um, us as people, person to person. And we need to remind ourselves of that we are all human. We are all, you know, the, we all, should be looked at as equal and how do we take those out those little uh, pieces that make that impression to make someone feel that uh you know that another person is not equal as a human being so these are really you know the points and they can be ever so small so do your children talk to you about what they're concerned about. What do you hear from them or sense from them as tribal members growing up a new generation? What are they really concerned about? We are um, sitting here in the November 2020. And, you know, one of my my son just graduated from Dartmouth in the spring. And you know, he's been here with me in lockdown pretty much since this spring. You know, his uh, springboard has been canceled. And so we're dealing with a lot of issues of, you know, uh, professional, his pro career has been interrupted, although he's working professionally, it's not necessarily in, in economics as we would like to see. Um, also, November, we just got out of our election. And as uh, we are here on the island, and the, limited to the people that we do see, 
uh, one of the people in his pods actually voted, um, you know, very differently. <laughs> and when stopping over at this person's house, and they had mentioned that the election was not over. And that was, and he had to have a discussion. What do you mean it's not over? You know, how is this affecting our democracy? How, you know, these are the conversations that they're seeing and it's, you know, how do we keep talking? You know, he was offended um, by someone that would follow someone that saw so many, you know, has made so many myths, especially about minority people who live in this country. And that he was very privileged and hasn't, you know, he has not been listening. So how do we, rather than moving away from people who have these views, uh, our discussions are, you know, and, and my children definitely know that, our discussions need to be had and they need to keep on talking and inviting people to things because we are, we're trying to be, bring the, this democracy back. And I think that they really, uh, my other, my daughter is in Brooklyn and she's been on the front lines of all of this social change. And she has been, you know, in many, uh, many social justice, um, partake, you know, uh, she's been partaking in, in whatever that she needs to, whatever that she can get to safely. And that's, you know, these are you know, 20 year old young people who are trying to understand the lives and all of this that have and still are being hurt by our system, which has preformed ju judgments. And how do they do their work? And they are looking for their community so that they can do more discussions and to try to bring people to an understanding. Um, and, and I'm very, very proud of them for reaching out, keeping the discussions going. They knew that, uh, actually, uh, they knew, my children knew that this was a movement that was not going to end with this, uh, this election. As we, uh, an, another movement on the island uh, that has been going on for five and a half months, uh, just people standing out, uh, as we called the, uh, one of the local papers and asked them to join uh, to see how we were going to wrap things up. And the local papers said, oh no, we don't have to because you know Biden won the election and we can move on now. But it's not over. And it's not over. Yeah. It's not over. We need to understand. We need to move forward in our small communities and then move forward as a state and then move forward on a federal level to change things so that people understand how what we had built was not built for all in our constitution in rights for all people you know and there were horrible horrible you know, um, inequities built into this system. And we need to try to bring people together because we're further divided than we even knew. As these discussions go on, it's really surprising to find out how divided our nation is as people, you know, who are supposed to live in equitable ways. We, you know, and how, you know, there's so many points to all of this that, you know, 
every person on you know just the smallest scale uh, by reading something or trying to understand uh, to bring our, ourselves kindness back for all is uh, yeah that brings me into my next question which is I know you're a select person, select woman for Aquina. Mm -hmm. uh, you're very active on a community level. And for those of us who live on Martha's Vineyard or live elsewhere, but we're not really connected to federal, the federal level or even the state level, we're very much in our own small communities. Do you have suggestions on how each of us can use our own small connections, our own networks to start making these changes? Yeah, I, I think, and, and I have actually was talking in, with people about, uh, geez, well, what do we do? Where do we start? How do we start the conversation? Uh, not, you know, and, and being one of the people that wants to work with people of all, all race and, you know, how do we come together? And, but without offenses and to, you know, to just have, have our common ideas and understandings and to be able to allow people the voice and the discussion to, to not offend, but to clear their system of whatever injustice they might wanna openly bring to that table and then move through it move forward um and we have started a, a certain uh diversity groups um i know on the island here we have um there are three or four and you know one of the things that i i was uh, i i will try to get all these groups together because i think i've i've heard of four um and that's including the one that we have uh started some discussions with and I think that working with your community and just keeping this as a discussion point, um, you know, okay, we're building a, a community garden. So, well, for us, it's, it's easy because we're looking at indigenous plants that grow here and things that people have used um, traditionally to plant there. Once again, we're cutting back, hopefully we'll um, we'll be able to clear the land which is overgrown and, and plant them. And as we do uh, plant and things like that, just from the very, that very level, um, bring our children to these plantings and, and having, you know, and maybe this five-year-old or this 18-year-old doesn't know me or, you know, in, in that community gathering making it an important part of, you know, and understanding, you know, the connections within your community, getting connected to your community and, and why we're all there, you know, making these points a little bit bigger so that we can be more connected. As I grew up in this community, I knew everyone, everyone, I knew every house, I knew every, you know, of uh, every name of the family that lived in the house. Even if I didn't know that person's wife, or I might only know one member, or or I definitely knew their name. Uh, to watch our community fall further away uh, from, you know, coming to these gatherings and knowing who lives where, knowing every house, that was something that changed this island. And I, and I bet if we all talk to a third generation person, you know, for, you know, that they knew so many people in that community because the communities would actually help each other. Uh, it wasn't, we'll drive to a convenience store or, you know, we're going to stay here. We'll, we'll knock on our neighbor's door and they can maybe loan us or lend us and then we'll repay them. And that was actually a really beautiful thing because of kindness. You know, if it, you know, what can your neighbors do to help even in the smallest way? I lived in a community 
off island, off this island uh, um, for 10 or 12 years. And I didn't know my neighbors. And I, I was out walking and, uh, and waving. I rarely got a wave back. And, you know, occasionally I would get a discussion at the end of a driveway or something. And, and it was always in my head, is there something more that I could do to encourage these conversations, which for me were part of uh, a mannerism, you know, these uh, points of connection that were good and healthy, but people are slowly shutting their neighbors out. And this is where causes these divisions. And, you know, we as communities really, <laughs> how do we do that in, in times of COVID, make these connections, which are so important for us and our children in the next generations. You know, it's, it's, it's even harder for us to uh, get out of our own bubble. And- Oh yeah, the coronavirus pandemic has totally thwarted a lot of attempts at socializing and conversation and uh, yeah. has helped increase this divide yeah. that's been rampant the past four years, definitely. Um, and then you throw a pandemic on top of it and we're very isolated mm -hmm. and we're very scared of the other person, um, health-wise, culture-wise. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's gonna be a tough, uh, a tough uphill climb from here, I think. Um, but I'm happy to hear that the uh, the next generation, your kids, are um, are open-minded and uh, enterprising enough to uh, to I move think forward. That, yeah, I think that in some ways here on the vineyard, uh, well, I mean it's insular, but we're also lucky because most of our community, you know, half of our community comes and then they go. Uh, to debt, uh, to other points of connection in the United States, in the world. Mm -hmm. I was very, very lucky. connected that way. Yeah, I was very lucky to create uh, this community oriented bakery. And so we've met people from all over the world who are actually leading uh, changes in social justice. Uh, and I was, I was very lucky because I think at some point when I moved back here, it really was my intention to go out and meet these people. I, I don't know why I, I felt that, uh, that I needed to make these connections and be an example to reach out to these people and, and exemplify the way that um, my people have done business. Uh, for those who don't know, I have an outdoor wood-fired oven and I bake on it most days until the hard, hard cold winter comes in. And, and but to put that first and to be outside and to say, you know, I love to be underneath these trees. I love to see the sunset and the moon rise as I'm baking and to go from inside to outside to put all the things that I will share with the community in to the oven and then there it goes is, is beautiful to me and it has actually many ways healed my anxieties over so many things. Um, but I, I was very lucky uh, to have felt that. And, I was taught early, my, my um, stepfather was the medicine man of the tribe and he said, many elders have told me that this is called Black Brook. So it's a low point in our, in our town. And this is actually where uh, several streams and um, under, underground uh, riverways run and collect. And through that water, uh, and through the smoke from the fires, our ancestors are close. And so to build that here and to know that I was trying to bring something to a community that otherwise had no year round 
business of any sort, but to have something that was warm or sweet and just to be able to be putting that smoke and most of the time the smells of bread or warm sweets throughout the community was an amazing thing to, to have. Um, and I, and it's on our system. So people, I needed to find it inside of me to put it out there without that person always being there to, you know, people just stop by and they leave money. And that is the honor part. It's not about me. It's about giving people the honor, the trust that, that we don't get anymore from our communities and to try to spread that and, and how important it is to touch, you know, that to who I am and why I'm here to, to do that. So, and I, I just hope that other tribal members um, will come and, and speak and join these discussions. Um, we are not a group of people that uh, you know make it our our daily practice to go out and speak, but we need to speak now and to find it. Um, whether it it if you have anxiety about it, what I do want to say is that it will it will heal, and it it will make you feel better if you could just say your words and put them out there. Uh, because I think that the people that are the people that are in these discussions or at these events are there to help people heal, and that energy is good. And, and hopefully, uh, these these conversations will keep uh, progressing, and and the change will come. I hope so too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Julie. <clears throat> it's been, uh, I know we could go on and on. I want to talk more, but uh, <laughs> we're at the end of our time. So, um, but I want to say thank you very much. Uh, All right. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, and I, I hope everyone enjoyed our conversations. I look forward to hearing all the other speakers. Thank you, thank Julie. Thank you so much for doing this. Just Appreciate the beginning. It. <laughs> it is. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Julie. Um, so I wanted to open it up to everyone. If you have questions or comments for Julie, um, that was recorded, but she is here or was here. Yeah, I am here. Julie, you are here. Okay, I didn't see your name. Great. So, um, so she's here. And if anyone wants to jump in, please unmute yourself and um, and go right ahead. Julie, I was wondering, this is not something that I heard you say in the talk, but what was the original language uh, name of the Wampanoags? Was that? Wampanoag. 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 So it's almost the same. Yeah. It's, uh, okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> And I know that the reclamation of the language has been a really um, important step in the past few years, um, that there's been a lot of work to reclaim it and understand it and maybe bring it back to life. I don't know. Can you tell us what stage that's at? Oh, yes. Actually, um, last week for the first time ever, uh, both uh, or actually myself and, and my son and my daughter were on a, um, uh, a language or in a language class. And it is a, you know, we only use, it's a, I can't think of the word. Ugh. Uh, say it again. Yeah, there you go, an immersion class. <laughs> so we were in an immersion class together and uh, it's the first time that we've ever been in class together. Although, you know, there have been bits and pieces learned uh, you know, that's one great thing about COVID. Uh, you know, we are learning uh, together now, and, which makes it much easier. And uh, we are very much looking forward to spending this classes going for one year. I think that there are 
There are uh, four teachers that are in our class with us. And it's just uh, a really, uh, a, 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 it, it's a very powerful thing uh, to be given, to be able to hear. Um, uh, and, you know, and, uh, and, and hopefully, I, I hope to see signs in the future that are both in our language and, and also in English. I think that, that we definitely know uh, that we, well, we can speak it fluently and that it's, um, it's really an important thing. Um, so speaking about language and, um, you know, bringing back languages that have kind of, uh, I guess, gone away or whatever. Um, but I don't know how involved you were or, or, or the tribe was in this, but uh, the UN did um, like each year, they'll like focus like a group of, of their research and, and projects on um, different things. And so 2019 was the year of international indigenous languages. And it was all about bringing them back and like, you know, having conversations and having these immersion classes and, and sort of really trying to create a broader conversation around, um, around language and it, you know, and bringing things, bringing language that has been pushed out because English has become such a power language, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I put a link in the bio or in the chat from, from the UN, what they talked about and the projects that they did and are, and are continuing to do. Just really interesting to see, you know, I mean, it's wonderful that you're participating in in immersion in immersion conversations and and things like that um with the Wampanoag tribe and and you know I mean it's it would be interesting I guess to th see like like you know you measure the metrics on how what kind of success this uh the year of the indigenous language actually did with the UN like what kind of you know progress have they made and and things like that Oh, absolutely. I know that, um, that um, well, there are two divisions in our tribe and one is Mashpee and the other, there are sister tribe. Mashpee um, has uh, a, a stronger, uh, they actually have an immersion school and mm. they're teaching children in their school uh, the language. So they have a little bit more of a head start um, but, uh, but we're coming right along. I think that um, I also work with the education department in our tribe. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll secure a, a language grant so that we can make sure that we have uh, enough funding to, 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 uh, to pay our teachers and also to, uh, let's see, uh, Oh, it's <laughs> and to pay our artists who, mm -hmm. who uh, one of them happens to be my daughter, who has illustrated two books now, and they are for the teaching of our people, uh, all in Algonquin. So yes. So oh, cool. We have another question in the chat um, from Lynn Whiting. It says, can you talk a little bit more about the community garden? Oh. The community garden, oh, six acres behind our Aquina Town Hall. I'm so excited about this. We have a plan. We have, um, well, we have now uh, monies that are helping us clear, uh, clear the property so that we are ready to uh, prepare the earth and also and, uh, hopefully uh, we'll be building a, a deer fence, which is so, so needed up here as we have herds of deer. Uh, but we have partnered with our parks and rec for a playground. Uh, we have partnered also with our uh, uh, building uh, committee, uh, housing committee. And so we have on one part of the six acres, there will be uh, we're hopeful to have uh, affordable housing, uh, at least three units. Um, and then in the center, 
there will be two playgrounds, one for older youth uh, and another for younger children, which is um, close to a vernal pool. Uh, uh, and, then, and then of course the garden paths, which will take uh, people walking through the gardens. Um, there are already blueberries and elderberries and uh, there's milkweed, uh, grape vines, uh, definitely dandelions, um, and maple trees. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I should just keep walking there because every time, every season that I walk there, I see more uncovered. Uh, so we're, we've been doing this for about uh, a year and a half or two years. This has been in my hopes and dreams uh, for about 12 years now uh, because of our open space up here in Aquina and the history. I hope to uh, create a historical walking tour, uh, but that the, this garden will be used to uh, hopefully to teach people what is growing all around us. And I think that it, by ingesting the plants that grow here, it helps our, our, our systems uh, become more resilient to, um, to disease like cancer and things like that. So we are, you know, I'm really looking forward to um, planting hopefully this spring. And uh, yeah, I, we do have a plan. Uh, and uh, we do uh, get together about once a month with our, uh, our, what do we call ourselves? We do have a name, can't think of what it is. <laughs> but um, we've got uh, Nole Taylor from Island Grown Initiative and some master gardeners. And uh, we're also open to other people joining us to help with ideas and and certainly helping hands to help uh, clear the, the land to, uh, to move this forward. It's, it's just, just an amazing, amazing effort. And I think that uh, food forests are, are a way that we should um, learn to teach our children more about uh, the land, the land around us. So very excited. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Great, thank you, Julie. Sure. Um, I think it's probably time for us to wrap up. Um, so thank you, Julie, for being here with us. Uh, really great. There, Holly, yeah. real quick, there was one more question. Oh, was there? Yep, uh, it just came in. Uh, will the garden have a tour with info about native use of the plants, medicinal, textile, et cetera? Yes, uh, it will. And we'll probably, we hope to bring that through um, not only our, well, probably our library in a large forum, forum it, within the town hall, um, so, or possibly even outside in the garden. So yes, um, we'll be using and, and showing what the plants are used for. We'll also hopefully host, uh, you know, informational uh, walks to show what we have planted, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. You're really welcome. appreciate your time being here. Um, and I want to thank uh, Nancy Hoffman. Nancy, I don't know if you're still on the call, but um, it was Nancy's idea to do a one day university uh, in the first place. Um, and I think it's been a, a very good symposium. I'm really happy with how it turned out and our wonderful six speakers. Thank you all for donating your time today. And um, uh, ASMV could use your donations for our educational programming. Uh, if you're interested, please donate at asmv.org slash donate. Uh, we're very close to meeting our goal today, actually. Um, every little bit helps. And we also want your feedback. We want your engagement, uh, your ideas, your comments um, on all of the um, um, lectures that we had today, all the speakers, all the topics. Uh, what do you want to hear more of? 
do you want to be involved in future conversations like this? Um, we definitely are excited to be a forum where we can all get together and discuss and learn from each other. So um, thank you all for being with us today. And if you want to get in touch, um, give us a ring at the, um, the number on our website, or you can email me at holly at asmv.org. And um, thank you all again. It's been a, a wonderful day spending the day with you and everyone take good care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it was you. very interesting. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.